What is an acting callback audition? How do you prepare for one? What can you expect on the day of? And when do you find out whether you've got the part? These are all great questions. Welcome to the second part of a two-part series on callback auditions. Let's go. Hi, I'm Vinny Horst, and this is The Starting Actor. On this channel, I focus on topics that you'll encounter in the audition room, on set, and in the field. Real-world topics that you may not learn in a classroom setting. By their nature, some of my videos will touch on acting technique, but if you're serious about learning how to act, then I encourage you to seek out formal and professional training. In the meantime, sit back, relax, and don't forget to like this video, to subscribe, and click the little bell so that you get notified when new episodes are launched. Welcome to the second part in a two-part series. If you missed the first part, you can watch it by clicking on the link at the top of the screen or in the show notes below. In that episode, we went through seven steps that you can take to get ready for a callback audition to prepare yourself for the big day. Now in part two, we'll pick up where we left off and go through 10 more steps, including what to expect during the audition, some curveballs that you can prepare for, and some post-audition tips. So with that, let's go. With the pre-audition prep out of the way, we are now ready to talk about the day of. The first important thing to do is to arrive at the audition on time. If your callback starts at 1 p.m., then be there at 12.45 p.m. As I've heard many times in this industry, 15 minutes is early. 15 minutes early is on time, and on time is late. Being on time is not only a courtesy, but it's also part of being a professional. There are also other practical reasons for it. For the actor, being on time allows you to settle in, to collect your thoughts, to collect your breath before you step into the room. It's not helpful to be in a rush or to be hot and sweaty because you ran from the parking lot. Give yourself every chance to be at the top of your acting game the moment you walk into the audition room. For casting directors, an on-time actor helps their casting process stay on time. And in the case where the casting director wants, for example, to pair certain actors together for a read, then a late actor is a problem. Next, be prepared for the possibility that many more production staff will be in the audition room than the first time. I've been part of callbacks where it seems like half of the production staff was there. The casting director, obviously, the director themselves, the AD, various producers, the cinematographer, the art director, wardrobe, and on and on. Most of the time, the casting director is the one that runs the show and everyone else just watches, but they are all there for the same reason. They're looking for the right actor for the job. If it feels right, Introduce yourself. It could be as simple as addressing the whole group. Hi everyone, I'm Vinny, nice to meet you. Or if someone greets you directly, then don't be afraid to shake their hand and exchange some pleasantries. Just go with the flow. But regardless, ABN, always be nice. Remember that you are on a job interview and you need to convince them that you are the right person for the job. Being someone who is easy to talk to and to work with is definitely part of their decision criteria. But don't be intimidated by the presence. Be honored. They're there because they're interested in you and your performance. And remember that they're cheering for you because if you do a great job, then their job is done, at least for now. They found the actor that they were looking for. Remember also what they're going through during the casting process. They sit in a room for hours or days listening to umpteen actors repeat the same lines over and over and over, and they're probably bored stiff and burned out. So be nice, be pleasant, and do a great job so that they can give you the part and go home already. Next. Now that you're in the room, be confident. You've done the work to prepare for the audition. You know your lines and you're ready to go. So walk in and be confident. If in your mind you're actually freaking out, then you need to use your acting skills and project confidence. Walk into that room like you own the place. This is your moment to get the people in the room to trust you and to believe that they can put you on set tomorrow and that you won't crack under the pressure. Act like you deserve to be there. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. 
Next, allow yourself to make mistakes. Of course, it would be ideal that you could just walk into a room and have everything go without a hitch. Yes, this is a callback, and yes, your anxiety is high, and this is a great chance at landing a part. But you know what? You're not perfect. You're human. You make mistakes, and they happen, and that's okay. They'll happen in the audition room, and they'll also happen on set. So this is where you show them that you're a pro. If you mess up a line, just stay in character and move on. A flubbed line can even be used to your advantage, like you did it intentionally. No one will know that it was a mistake unless you say sorry and you tell them it's a mistake. So stay in character, keep going, and all will be forgiven. Next, be open to adjustments. You'll have come, obviously, to the audition having made choices about your performance, which is perfect. And as I mentioned earlier, after the first read-through, the casting director might ask you to make some adjustments and to try the scene a different way. So you need to leave room in your preparation for spontaneity and variability. Avoid locking yourself into a specific way of performing the script and be open to change. Now, when you're asked to change your performance in the audition room, what they're looking for is to see how directable you are. Can you hear instructions and change your performance? This is an acting skill in and of itself, and when actors get good at it, they can hear an instruction and literally change their performance on the spot. Next, be mentally prepared for a cold read. After performing the main audition script, you may also be asked to read and perform something that you've never seen before. This is called a cold read. This is another and separate skill that you'll eventually learn as an actor to read a script once, to quickly absorb, understand, and make choices about how to perform it. A casting director may ask you to do a cold read to test your ability to turn scripts around quickly, which is important, for example, in episodic television shows. Or it might simply be a practical matter that they are trying to cast many actors for many roles as quickly as possible, and they just want to see you read a different role on the spot. Next. Be prepared to perform a monologue. Sometimes as an alternative to a cold reading a script, the casting director may ask you to deliver a monologue. My acting teachers have always recommended that I have a handful of monologues prepared and sharp in case this happens. But I'll be honest, curating, preparing monologues for this low likelihood eventuality requires a lot of initiative and takes a lot of time and energy. It's not easy, but it's part of being a professional actor. So if you have planned ahead and you have monologues in your back pocket, then choose one that is appropriate for the tone of the project. For example, if it's a dark and moody film, then choose a dark and moody monologue. If, however, when asked, you don't have a mood appropriate monologue, but you have something else ready, then discuss with the casting director whether they wanna hear that. They may or they may not. And with that, you are now prepared for a callback. We defined what a callback is. We talked about how to prepare yourself and your performance, what to expect in the holding room and the audition room, a few tips about what to expect during the audition itself, and we discussed some ways the casting director might further test your skills after the main audition is complete. What's left then is to discuss what comes after the audition. My first piece of post-audition advice is learn patience is learn and practice patience. Your work is done and now you wait. Wait to find out whether or not you got the part. For new actors, this waiting game is excruciating. By this point, you've spent a lot of time and energy preparing for and executing an audition. You're excited, you're full of adrenaline, and you can't wait to tell everyone about how well it went. Naturally, you're dying to hear back from the casting director, and if you're like me, you check your phone every five minutes for new messages. But you have to take a breath. Unfortunately, all that you can do at this point is be patient. There's no way to know when or even if you'll hear back. As well as everything went, the reality is, and I'm sorry to say this, you probably won't get the part. Realizing that you weren't cast is one of the most difficult parts of being an actor, but you're not alone. 
Actors of every experience level, including big time performers, experience it. Rejection is normal and it's to be expected. It's important to remember that not being cast doesn't mean that you aren't talented, okay? It just means that this particular part wasn't a perfect fit for you at this particular time. Remember also that auditioning is a skill, and like any skill, it takes time and practice. My second piece of advice is related to the first. Just let it go. You did the work, you impressed the casting director, you got a call back, you performed well at it, and that's that. Whether you're selected is completely out of your control, so it's important that you just let it go and don't obsess about it. As a symbol of that type of spirit, I know some actors that tear up the sides after their audition. Now, personally, I'm a bit of a pack rat and I keep my scripts for a couple of weeks until it's clear that I didn't get the part. But after any audition, I always try to spend a moment to focus on how good it feels to have accomplished what I just did. I studied hard, I practiced well. In some cases, I even gave myself permission to take time off of work. And then I drove to the audition. I stood in front of a bunch of strangers and I put myself out there in hopes of landing a job as an actor in a film or television show. I mean, seriously, how cool is that? I try to take joy from going through the audition process itself. And if I get the part, then great. And if I don't, it's a bummer, but I still had fun. And that allows me to let go of the audition, not to worry about it, to forget that it even happened. If I get a call from the casting director in a day or next week or next month, great. But if not, hey, I learned something new that I can apply to my next audition. Now, for your interest and information and for my curiosity, I recently went back and looked through my audition history for the last 18 months. And what I found I thought was pretty remarkable. I got a callback for one out of every five auditions. And then I landed the part for one out of every five callbacks. Now, I'm not a math guy, so I do apologize if my math is off, but according to my calculations, that is a success rate of 4%. Let that sink in for a second. For every 25 parts that I auditioned for, I landed one role. Now, that was, to be honest with you, the number was a bit of a surprise to me, but I don't feel dispirited by that winning percentage. In fact, it motivates me. And I think that, again, speaks to my willingness to take joy from the auditions themselves and let it go afterwards. If I didn't do that, then I'd probably cry. I've also read online stories, by the way, that some actors may go an entire year, two years, three years without landing a part. It's a competitive world out there and it ain't easy. But luckily for you and I, there are always new projects starting up and looking for talented actors. So keep at it, keep practicing, and keep auditioning. That is it for another episode of The Starting Actor, and I am your host, Vinnie Horst. I hope that you found this info useful and that I encourage you to like this video and to subscribe to the channel. If you have friends that are actors, please, I would appreciate if you would let them know about the channel. And finally, if you have any questions about this or any other topics, then please leave me a note on any of the videos in my channel or direct message me on Instagram at Vince Horst. Talk again soon.